and welcome to the second video in our GUI screencast series. Last video, we finished off by making this little app that does nothing. So we have sliders that can move, but they aren't actually controlling anything yet. So in this video, we're going to take the first steps towards actually getting these sliders to do something. So we'll start by just focusing on the red slider for this video, and then in the next video, we'll move it on to setting up something for all. So focusing in on our red slider, the way that we can create callback functions is by selecting the thing that we want to create a callback for. So in this case, the red slider. And then over in our property inspector, there's actually one more tab that we haven't looked at yet called callbacks. If we click on that, we can see that we have multiple options for a slider. There's two that are available, value change function and value changing function. Value change function executes when the change is complete. So I've clicked it, I've dragged it to 0.5 and I've released the mouse. That's when the value changed function will run. The value changing function will run the whole time that I'm dragging it. So as I drag it across, it's continuously running. Now you would think that that would be the better way to do it in terms of making the color update continuously and you would be right. However, that way is a lot more complicated and we'll leave that for the extension task in the lab. Today, we're just going to focus on the value changed function. However, feel free to ask me any questions about the value changing function as well. So let's create that function. And there's, there's a really easy way to do it with up app designer. So all we need to do is type what we would like it to be called. So ultimately, we're going to want to update the color of that panel. So I'm going to call this function update color. And now that I've typed that name, I can either press enter or I can press this arrow. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically generate a bit of a template for that callback function. A few, so what we've done now, we've switched into code view. And you can switch between design view, which is where we made all the pretty stuff, and code view, which is where we'll write our functionality by just toggling those buttons at the top. Within code view, you can see that MATLAB has automatically generated all of this stuff to create those red sliders, green sliders, and blue sliders that we just dragged and dropped. It's done all the behind the scenes work of actually turning that into code. Anything with a gray background in code view can't be edited. So I can't go down here and try to change the position. It won't work. It won't let me type. There are ways around that, but more, more than likely, it's going to be easier to just go back to design view and adjust those things in that graphical format. So let's focus on what we can edit, edit which is the stuff with the white background, which is inside this function template that we've created. So we can, in here, let's just start by displaying the fact that we have moved the slider. So I'm just going to display a message that says the red slider has moved. And I'm going to run this. Oh, I accidentally stopped sharing. Let's bring that back. So I'm going to run this now. And we've got our app back up. And if I just move this a little bit, it's giving me some warnings about app designer, um, but no errors, so that's fine. <laughs> um, if we drag the green bar, it does nothing. We haven't created any functionality for it yet. But if we drag the red bar and release it, we get this message, the red slider has moved. So every time I shift it around or click somewhere else, it tells me that the red slider has moved. Again, note that it's not updating that as I drag, only when I release. So that is working the way that we want it to. It's doing some sort of action based on my movement of that slider bar. So a message saying the red slider has moved is not ultimately very helpful. Um, what we want to achieve is actually updating the color that we see down the bottom. So to do that, we're actually going to need to get the amount of red that the user is setting. So the way to do that is by actually accessing the value property of the slider. So if we go back into our app designer view, and we'll go back over to design view for a moment, you can see that a slider has a property called value. If I change that value, oops, that was too big, right? Because we're only between zero and one. If I change that value to 0 0.1, it adjusts the position. So this value property is actually telling us where the arrow is on the bar. We can both retrieve that and set that, but at the moment we're interested in retrieving it. So let's go in over into code view and have a think about how we can do that. So we want the value property of the app.redslider object 
So we can just use the same sort of notation that we've seen with structs in the past, which is app dot red slider. So that's the object dot its property, which is value. And for now, I'm just going to display that. So let's just wrap that up in a display command. Now I'll run this program again, and it will open up again. And again, I'm just going to clear those warnings. Didn't like something I did with one of the heights earlier, and I'm not going to fix it for the sake of this video. Um, cool. So let's have a look at what happens now. So if I drag it to 0 0.2, it says the red slider has moved and actually tells me where it's moved to. If I move it again, it tells me again. If I click somewhere, it tells me again. And all of these are telling me exactly where I've clicked. So that's actually more useful information. We can ultimately use that to set the background color. Obviously, we can't do it quite yet because we've only got it working for the red. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to get it working for the green and blue as well and tie that up all together to actually change the colour of that panel. So I'll see you in the next video.